Hi folks, welcome to the preparedhomestead.com. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Uh, a drizzly rainy day around here. Uh, kind of gloomy and quiet, which is fine with, with, with me. I'm, I'm okay with that. And we could use a little bit of rain. Supposed to be getting some more uh, throughout the day and into tomorrow, maybe an inch or better. Well, so we'll see. Uh, but the, the creeks and the ponds around here could certainly use that because I was looking at the at the long range weather forecast. I get it; it's an it's an El Nino kind of year, but um, it looks like a quite warm um, warm weather for the whole winter. I, I didn't see, and of course, long range weather is so hard to predict. So I'm sure it could change multiple times. But as of right now, um, there's zero snow <laughs> really predicted for too much, at least anyways, you know, much at all for the whole winter for us. So the rain is going to be necessary to, to get enough moisture in the ground before spring comes. Anyways, babbled on enough about the weather because some of you just don't care about that. Um, once again, we have to say it, it's getting crazy in the Middle East. I know there's there's been all kinds of talk for weeks and weeks, but it's it's not an exaggeration. Uh, in case you haven't been keeping up in the last few days, maybe you've been busy with with holiday kind of stuff. Um, apparently, according to the United States and Israel, and, and maybe a few other or you know governments or whatever, they claim that uh, Iran sent a uh, drone and attacked a shipping vessel um, all the way over going towards India. This was a, a shipping vessel that was uh, owned by an Israeli company. And this is not anywhere near Yemen or all of that stuff that's going on. The stuff with Yemen is increasing and heating up. Um, uh, one of our ships took down four or five drones. It was being, basically our ships were being attacked. Uh, they, they didn't make contact, but uh, they took those down and things are pretty rapidly heating up when it comes to the tensions with this. And now that there is indication that it wasn't done through a proxy, but Iran themselves uh, could have possibly uh, sent this drone. This is an escalation, folks. We're getting much, much closer to a Middle Eastern war. And um, things are just kind of kind of getting out of control there. Um, it's being reported, if you're, you remember in the last few days, the United States put together this coalition of naval fleet to kind of protect the shipping there in the Red Sea. Well, apparently some of our European allies have decided to break away and not consider themselves under the direction of the United States. Uh, so there's some tension there. Um, this vessel that was struck supposedly by um, Iran uh, was hauling uh, Saudi Arabian oil. So now Saudi Arabia has gotten into the mix of it. Um, Turkey sent some aircraft into Syria and bombed a bunch of oil refinery stuff in Syria. Uh, so it's it's interesting watching the, the, the division because it's not quite clear because on one hand, for instance, Turkey uh, is a NATO ally and part of NATO, but yet has been very critical of Israel and the United States in regards to Hamas and Gaza, but yet they're also striking targets in Syria. Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia has criticized what Israel has done, and yet they're being hit by Iran. I mean, it, it's it's a big mess, which that's exactly what they want it to be, I would say. They want it to be confusing. Uh, because we know who the author of confusion is and who that person isn't. We have to be prepared for this. Uh, aside from just the war stuff that's going on and the, and the buildup of war and the very p strong potential that in days or at the very least weeks, we could be seeing ourselves as a nation involved in direct conflict in the Middle East, which means troops and personnel, all kinds of stuff going over there. Uh, this is greatly affecting shipping. Uh, because pretty much now, hardly any ship is going through the Red Sea. 
uh, and through the Suez Canal because of all of this, they're having to reroute that shipping all the way around Africa, which has caused shipping costs to increase uh, dramatically, you know, 25% or more. And they're also saying that insurance rates for these cargo vessels and oil and stuff has gone up dramatically because no one wants to insure these things because they're all big setting targets for all of these terrorist organizations. So when you consider that the shipping costs themselves are going up, um, delays are happening already. Uh, IKEA announced that they are going to be ex they expect to be experiencing delays because of some of their stuff now is having to go all the way around Africa. So shipping costs increased, delays increased, um, and then insurance insurance costs increase. All that gets trickled down to you and I. Uh, we've already seen oil costs go up since all of this started in the last couple of weeks. Uh, which means you're going to be paying more, okay? You're going to be paying more. You're going to be experiencing more delays in the supply chain. Does this affect everything in the supply chain? No, of course not. In fact, um, considering the whole planet, uh, it's probably affecting the United States maybe less because so much of our stuff actually comes, if it's, if it's imported, so much of our stuff that's being imported doesn't go through that that area. Now, some does. I get it. Some does, but not all of it. Mostly what's going to be affected is Europe, um, Africa, you know, India, that kind of stuff. Either way, it's causing major problems. And at some point, it seems that things are just going to kind of pop off. Right now, the tensions are constantly building. Uh, Yemen has has been very vocal that they are, they're, they're going full on into this uh, Israel is is making threats uh, against Lebanon and Yemen uh, that they're they're going to move their their conflict into those areas. Israel has also notified Egypt to back away from the border there with Gaza because they plan on taking the whole thing, um, and they are moving southward through Gaza to the uh, border there with Egypt e e with Egypt. Excuse me. And so they have, have notified Egypt to move back off the border, and they've also notified Lebanon that they should move back at least six miles off of the Israeli-Lebanon border, at least Hezbollah. Um, things are just tense, folks, and I just I, I can't see how things are just going to play out and not end up being in some kind of conflict. It could. It could, at least a greater conflict. There's already a conflict going on, but I'm talking about greater than what it is right now. This, um, this, this will have repercussions, okay? There's so much tension right now with everything. North and South Korea, China, Taiwan, uh, Russia, Ukraine, NATO, uh, and then a few other little small places around the world. Um, and, and it's all... It's all falling on, on one of two sides, you know, NATO, the West, United States versus Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and, and all, of their, um, all of their buddies. So if things pop off in the, in the Middle East, which looks like at this point that that could be the first thing that pops off, uh, it could cause just the whole house of cards to collapse. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, Xi Jinping made this statement here in the United States that China had no interest in starting wars or going to war against Taiwan um, or, or you know, invading foreign countries and stuff like that. And I said then, I said, if you listen to his words, it was all about uh, another country. They don't view Taiwan as a separate entity. And and so I, I made the statement then that that probably he made he was careful about what he said because it did not include Taiwan. And now, after all that happened a few weeks ago, now China is saying that they do have plans, that they will take back Taiwan, uh, which seems like they're contradictory in what Xi Jinping said. But if, again, if you'd listen to the words, it's it's not really in the same way shifting gears, but not really here in the United States. There's been all this talk about, you know, these illegals that are crossing the border buying guns and, and getting jobs and doing all this kind of stuff. And how can we do that? 
well, it's because they're they're by a technicality not illegal because the Biden administration is is changing and and manipulating laws and rules. As long as they step across the border and declare themselves a, a refugee or declare themselves an asylum seeker, then they are not considered illegal. That's how the White House press person can say, "Hey, the you know illegal immigration is way down." Yes, because none of them are illegal anymore. Technically, uh, they're declaring you know asylum seekers, and then we're granting them you know temporary or whatever uh, asylum status. It, it's all uh, it's all about the the language that's used, twisting the words. And and the stuff that's going on in the Middle East and uh, China, North Korea, Russia, Ukraine, all that is is the tensions are getting so so tight that I don't even know if there's a possibility that this could all just be resolved. And and the thing is, is that no one really, no, at least not any, no no leadership it seems is wanting to step up and say, hey, let's let's calm this down. Let's figure out a peaceful way so that the whole world doesn't blow up in a big World War III. I think the Biden administration and the entire uh, U.S. government is is very serious about doing this. We, we as a government, have to establish ourselves as still the, the reigning champion of the world, that we're still stronger than China and Russia and Iran and all that. And really, the only way to do that is through a war. Um, China, Russia, and Iran, they want to be the top dog. They want their, their new BRICS currency to be the top dog. And the only way to do that is to win a war. And so we're seeing the entire world build into this conflict. Is this a biblical war? war? Probably. Is this the biblical war? Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe could. Maybe no. The point is, is it's going to have great effects. It already is having great effects. The amount of money that we've spent in Ukraine and now uh, Israel and, and we're spending in Taiwan, the, the amount of, uh, of effect on our own military, the, the amount of effect of, of just inflation due to shipping costs increase and, and all of this kind of stuff, it's going to be affecting you and I much more um, than probably what most people think. So we have to be prepared for that. We have to be thinking about this and getting prepared. Does that mean that we are at risk of a direct conflict here on U.S. soil? Probably not the highest probability of that, but I'd say as things continue to increase, it does. And if we find ourselves in a, in a massive war and just like has been predicted, if we do, uh, we could start seeing cyber attacks here in the United States, uh, terrorist attacks because of the massive influx of illegals that's come across and who knows how many of them are here to do really bad things. Um, all of that, I think, is definitely on the table. And we have to be aware of that. I, I know for many of you, the next couple of days are family time and relax time and fun time, and that's okay. But let's not forget uh, what's going on. And it, Based on historical things, it's very possible that things could kick off um, during this time. Uh, I mean, there's already uh, warnings out about, you know, potential acts of violence, you know, starting tomorrow because of a big holiday. Um, and we have to we have to be prepared for that. Um, this is this is no different than than what we've talked about before. It's just getting ourselves more and more ready uh, as the days get closer to you know, the next election, I think a lot of us figure that, that these kinds of things are, are going to become more uh, likely to happen. So be aware of that. Uh, stocking up, obviously, as always, but uh, mostly just, just kind of keeping your head on a swivel. I think, it, I mean, I'm probably going to say it many, many times over the next year, uh, but I think we should all be keeping our heads on a swivel all the time. We should all be alert, not on our edges of our seats in panic with their nails gripped in uh, and white knuckles, but we should all be kind of living in a in a in a phase of alert. We should we should all be staying that way and 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 being ready because um, the coming year could bring some some pretty crazy things. And and right now here in the middle there in the Middle East, it's it's looking like that could be possibly the starting point. Maybe not, but it's possible. Bottom line is, is you need to just keep preparing, um, getting all aspects of your life ready because it's not really a matter of if anymore. And it hasn't been for a long time. It's not been an if when it all, you know, if it all happens, it's when, 
when it's going to happen. And that we may not know, but we can always be prepared for the when. Folks, you need to be getting your houses in order and preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.